our main topic uh, today. Yeah, we are discussing uh, in this uh, uh, segment uh, the customs and the traditions uh, of uh, the Egyptians uh, during the holy month of Ramadan, uh, which dates back uh, 1,000 years ago. Um, uh, when did the, these uh, traditions uh, start uh, and all the customs uh, that uh, uh, the Egyptian uh, abide by during the holy month of Ramadan? To shed more light on this, we have the pleasure to have with us uh, today um, uh, Mr. Ihab Kamil, historian and researcher. Good morning, Mr. Kamil. Good morning. Happy Ramadan. Thank you. The same to you. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, sir, uh, when did the, the Egyptians uh, start celebrating uh, all the traditions uh, that uh, accompanied the holy month of uh, Ramadan uh, 1,000 years ago? Can we say that it started with the Farimate era? Or of course. Rule? All what you see nowadays, it's basically Fatimid. Um, the Fati or at least the Fatimids had put the base for it mm -hmm. and it had developed later on. The reason for this was a very important reason was that the Fatimids were originally Shiites, Ismaili Shiites, and the Egyptians were Sunnis. So the, the Egyptians had always doubts about the Fatimids. So the Fatimids had tried always to prove to the Egyptian people all the time that they have a good faith, good beliefs. And that is why they had given a great deal of care for the celebration, not only of Ramadan, yes. but all the religious feasts and festivals. Yes. And they always used to surround it with um, all the signs of um, extravagance and richness to show their, um, their own respect to these religious occasions and from that uh, of course from these religious occasions was Ramadan that's 30 days that's the holy month so all what you see nowadays and, and in the earlier periods the base was Fatimid yes so concerning the lantern <coughs> which is one of the symbols uh, of the very important symbols of uh, Ramadan uh, so uh, uh, when did the, the Egyptians start uh, using the lanterns does it go to, uh, they were um, um, celebrating the, uh, the arriving of um, Muaz al-Din Leif Yes, Hini? this is absolutely is it, correct. Could you tell us the story? Um, the, Fati the, the Fatimid family, at the beginning, they had, um, they had started um, sending, before they come, sending um, what, we, what we call like preachers, who are just speaking about al Muiz mm -hmm. and making um, a base for him among the Egyptians. Especially that for the Fatimids, the Caliph was also a religious leader. He was the Imam more yes. than being a political leader. And um, he arrived in Ramadan and he arrived at night. So the people of Cairo, they took the lanterns and went to meet him. The coincidence was that it was the month of Ramadan and he liked and it was by night by night so they so used he he liked it and he started um, to make this as a tradition and the Egyptians had started uh, especially the young children going around the city um, with the lanterns of course, that's beside that there used to be big processions every day carrying gigantic candles, lighting, and the markets that used to open at night or all night that used to be lit. So it became related to the lanterns and these big candles. It seems to be that the children, while they were walking, the merchants who were working all night, they liked the idea of this lighting of the streets and all that and used to give the children some money yes. and that explains some of the songs that they that we used to sing in our traditions uh, give us the tradition that is related to what the merchants used to do so as i was just saying most of this is fatimid yes 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 it's one of the symbols of course uh, the lantern of uh, Ramadan. Um, oh yes, and, and, and it continued. The, 
Yes, sir. So now, um, um, uh, also until uh, today, uh, all the families are very keen to buy for their children the lanterns. Oh, yes. Could, could you give us an idea about the, the traditions uh, nowadays? Of course, as I said, in the past, it started and it continued until it became a symbol. The lantern is not just um, a lantern that the children, they walk by. It, mm. Later on, it became a symbol of the holy month. Yes. So, from generation to generation, it became something essential for every family to buy their children a lantern, as I said, because it turned to become a symbol more than a toy, yes. actually. Um, I remember till not a very long time ago, we used to buy the same lanterns our ancestors used to use, the one with the candle, and I believe um, at some point this had changed, but the concept itself, the idea itself did not change. Yes. It's still up till nowadays existing, and um, I believe if you, especially when you walk in the old, old districts, Cairo? Of Cairo. Old Cairo, you go through um, Khalifa Street, Saliba, mm -hmm. uh, Suq Salah, uh, these areas, Shara Al Muaz, Al Gamaliya. Al Gamaliya Street, yes. um, you will see that they still have this lantern. Maybe yes. you will find a big gigantic lantern in front of every shop or something like that. As I said, it became a symbol. Yes, also all the, the Egyptians are keen uh, to have the lanterns uh, in uh, the houses uh, in, in several sizes, uh, the small, the big uh, lanterns. Yes. Also, a special uh, cloths uh, that we uh, uh, use as cushions or as uh, the khiyamiya, covers yes. Uh, for, uh, yes. Yes, um, yes. yes. Um, as I said, this is a tradition. The and decorations of Ramadan. Yes, and the Khiyamiya, because of course in the old days they used to have big tents and the caliphs of the Fatimids and the later dynasties that had ruled, they used to make these big tents and they extend huge uh, banquets for the public, uh, for the travelers, the passing through, mm. and this was to celebrate Ramadan um, to the extent that there used to be a special kitchen in the royal residence that was specialized for bringing out meals for the public uh, during, the the, during the month of Ramadan. Yes. So the decorations, of course, are uh, very uh, important. Also, uh, during the holy month of Ramadan, uh, the Egyptians are keen uh, to make some desserts uh, specialized, uh, especially for Ramadan, like the kunafa or uh, um, uh, kataif or um, several desserts. Well, the kunafa and the kataif, they date back to an earlier period. Yes. The, the origin of the kunafa and kataif was actually in Damascus during the time of Caliph Al Walid ibn Abdul Malik. It was very well, or Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik. Um, opinions are divided about who it was, but one of them, actually, they, they, they were two brothers, but one of them used to wake up in the, at night hungry, so he asked from his uh, pastry chef to make him something that, um, that, that would make him. Uh, feel full and that what happened and it continued and it came to Egypt actually Ramadan was related to pastry starting also from the Fatimid period they used to have something called souk al halawiyin um, the market for desserts the, the, the market for desserts they used to not only make kunafa and kataif but they also used to make shapes from sugar like a lion um, a horse um, uh, a, bo a boy, a girl, very nice shapes, and the people used to buy them like little, little pastry, like little trinkets and pastry, and eat them as they walk. Mm -hmm. So this market used to flourish during the month of Ramadan as well. Um, also, the kunafa and the kataif, it, they related it to Ramadan, starting from the Fatimid period, yes. actually. Um, but it existed before that but it apparently in um, Ramadan because it was related to pastry in general um, and this was the most famous pastry 
obviously it became related to Ramadan more than any other month. Yes. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Kamil, um, the traditions of the Egyptians, uh, their family gatherings uh, during uh, the holy month of uh, Ramadan uh, to have uh, their meal or uh, to, uh, to have their lunch with each other. Oh, yes. That, yeah, that, that's, that's not only the families. People used to gather and eat gather. together during Ramadan um, since a very long time ago, since the time of uh, the Middle Ages, um, either in public banquets or some of the rich people, they used to make banquets for the friends. Even the Caliph, the Fatimid Caliph, mm -hmm. who was the first one to start the public banquets, it started by making a banquet for the princes and the high officials in the Fatimid state. So gatherings became, um, they started like this until it had developed to the charity banquets later on. The main idea is gatherings, um, either on the small scale uh, in the family or in, on the big scale in uh, the big banquets like uh, the Fatimid Caliph or the Mamluk Sultans used to extend for their own high officials. Um, and I guess it continued up till yes, nowadays. Yes, of course, uh, the Egyptians are keen until uh, today to uh, uh, the family uh, gatherings and uh, are keen on preserving the traditions uh, that started 1,000 years ago. What does this show of the Egyptians, preserving this uh, culture and traditions? It shows authenticity. It shows very deep profound roots and it shows as well that the Egyptians are um, people who have a very long history and they are stuck to it and that's yes. something to be very much proud of yes yes so um, what makes uh, um, uh, Egypt or what makes uh, um, the holy month of Ramadan very special if you spend it in Egypt uh, nowadays as we were just saying, these traditions, they date back to hundreds of years ago. So they are strong and they are deep traditions. And the Egyptians are so keen on them. You will never find this tradition in many countries. Maybe something close to this in North Africa, in Tunisia, Morocco, but not the same not like the in same, Egypt. Of course. Um, however, in Egypt, it's related to many things that had developed up till the 20th and the 21st centuries. It's something that builds on something that builds on something until it had formed what we see nowadays, the old with the new, in a magnificent, magical mixture, which I doubt you can see anywhere else. You can enjoy the old atmosphere in Cairo, and the old traditions with the modern traditions, even when, while you're sitting at home. I yes. don't think you can find this anywhere else. Anywhere, yes. Uh, this is the 30 days of, uh, uh, it's like a feast that extends for 30 days, no, the holy month of Ramadan. It's the Egyptian charm, yes, I call it. Yes, that's it. Yes, of course. Yes. Uh, so um, uh, now where we are, you know, uh, the new generation is now taking this uh, tradition and continuing and giving it to uh, uh, other uh, generations. Uh, so uh, the holy month of Ramadan, also uh, Egyptians or expatriates, um, uh, Egyptian uh, uh, living abroad also are very keen to take their vacation and to come and spend the holy month of Ramadan here with their families. Oh yes, as I was just saying, in Egypt Ramadan is different. It has long, a taste, a special, a taste. special taste, profound roots, and as well, it has some kind of charm in Egypt. So. Basically, I wouldn't be surprised that the Egyptians want to spend Ramadan over here. I'll tell you, I, I had spent Ramadan abroad, or a few days yes, of Ramadan. Yes, of course, all of us, we... Um, I was in South America. I didn't feel it. Feel, yes. I spent like the first four or five days, but I did not start feeling that it was Ramadan until I stepped in Cairo airport. Yeah. That's when I started feeling Ramadan. Other than that, there are no signs of celebrations. 
Um, for example, um, you will find that even in countries around us that speaks the same language, you haven't got the same celebrations. Go around like around the Shara and Muiz and Hussein area. Yes. Listen to the chanting of the Sufis who are celebrating Ramadan. Um, you will see the um, you will see the diff something completely different yes. from any other country. The smell as well. You feel that you're back in time, like five six hundred years ago. Yes. Um, I don't think you can find that anywhere else. We can already see the decorations uh, and the lanterns uh, are uh, uh, hanged on the balconies. Uh, uh, when it, if you're uh, you know uh, moving around with your car you can see that the, the, all the balconies are hanging uh, the uh, the lanterns and the lights and also uh, in the entrances of the many buildings oh yes yes even praying in Al Azhar mosque that's a completely different experience for <coughs> any person from the Islamic world who's coming to Egypt mm. it's enough to tell you that you listen to the Quran being recited in four or five different ways of reading, yes. which is something you will never find easily anywhere else. The voices of the sheikhs who chant. Egypt is as what they call the state of chanting. So the people, they come to listen to the Egyptian sheikhs while they're reading the Quran. You, they, you go through these districts and you find all these lights the idea of lighting the streets at night this is very much dating back to the Fatimi period and continued through uh, the Mamluks period and later on the celebration of seeing the crescent and how that the all the state and the government is on full alert to waiting for the Mufti to declare that tomorrow is the first day of Ramadan or yes. that is um, the last day of Shaban. These are traditions. These are traditions that gives this country its speciality. And it shows that it's a country that has rules and traditions throughout history. Yes, uh, also the Egyptians uh, take benefit of this uh, holy month of Ramadan, uh, which is uh, uh, trying to support and help others and uh, needy uh, people. Well, this, this, this is also from the ancient times. It was always like that. Ramadan is like an occasion, maybe because it's the time when they uh, give the zakah. Yes, and, and help others and provide and them others. with the free meals. <coughs> exactly. So. They, they used Ramadan as a good chance, yes. really, for charity and, um, and all that. And this had continued, as I was just saying, nothing mm. hasn't got roots. If you trace everything the Egyptians do, you will find that it, had, it has roots in history. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Happy Ramadan. Uh, thank you for coming uh, today and joining us uh, and for your valuable information, Mr. Ihab Kamil, historian and uh, researcher. Thank you. Thank you. Well, with this, my dear viewers, uh, we come to the end of this uh, uh, segment. I leave you with the, the rest of the segments of The Breakfast Show. My name is Amal Mukhtar.